One West Magazine, One West Radio. It's your boy P. Flicks, Damian Sanders. Hone it down for the West Coast from the tip to the top. From Seattle to San Diego, man, you already know what time it is. Shouts out to the big OG homie, OG Suicide, for laying down that One West Magazine foundation. Now tonight, we got a very special guest in the house, man. I mean, as a matter of fact, man, people still asking how this man do that there all day long, man. I got the big homie in the house. Young Bleed, man. How you doing, Big G? Oh, I'm pretty good, family, man. Passing through like I do to make it do what it do, man. What's good with hood? Yeah, all day long. Now, first off, man, thanks for taking the time to holler at One West Radio. Most definitely, bro. I appreciate y'all having me come through, man, in a real way. Yes, sir. Now, all day, man, I ask everybody that come on the show, man, every MC, because we got the youngsters that's always listening. They always asking for advice. How was you introduced yeah, to the game, man? What, what was your first experience with hip-hop music? Hip hop music, um, I say, man, the early '80s, man, like around '82, '83. You know, I was kind of involved into my own thing musically. You know, music always was in family, but I incorporated it, man, and really starting, like I said, I was like about you know, between eight, and nine years old back then. And that whole evolution was taking place within the '80s, man, as far as um, hip hop period, and in particular the East Coast. I was in the Sugar Hill, and everybody liked, you know, everybody. In, that was coming about in that time, but in particular, man, like in 83, when Ron DMC put out that first self-titled Ron DMC record. Yeah, man, I really marked in to the pad, man, and um, really started writing around that era, and, and you know, never looked back from that, man. So yeah, as well as it evolved, I evolved with it, more or less, you know? Now, all day long now, describe your, um, your first experience being in the studio and actually recording. Okay, let's say in 83, I was about nine. I started recording about two years after that. Rest in peace to a guy named um, Tommy Jefferson, man. He used to have a, a house studio in Baton Rouge back in the gap, man, that all the locals, you know, could afford the $20, $25 an hour at the time. So he helped a lot of kids that was coming up town show-wise and was trying to spread from a local standpoint. So I started recording, like I said, around 85, man, my first recording, original beats, and, you know, sampling records, James Brown, or whatever, here and there, scratching just as well as, you know, whatever was taking place in New York. And I was kind of going to my own evolution and all, um, Baton Rouge in the South, for those that don't know. Yeah. So that whole thing, from turntables to, you know, mixing, scratching, and whatever, graffiti, break dancing, pop locking, it all kind of come to me like that, man. So like I said, I started recording about, mm, I can't think of the name of the first song I did, man, but about Buddy Lover, man. We was working on reel to reels and stuff like that back then, man. Four tracks and eight track tape recordings, man. So it was the experience. I might have shared about seven hours of my first time just getting used to writing and recording and re-recording. So it was a whole different thing than what's taking place now when you're talking reel to reel to Pro Tools, you did. Yeah. All day. Now, dig that. Now, it's a very unique unique name that you have, man. Young Bleed. How did you um, yes, come up sir. with that name, Young Bleed? Well, like I said, about 83, as that was happening, I, you know, I, I, I got a glimpse into, you know, the hip-hop world as a kid. And, I, and once it registered with me, I registered with it. And I knew that's what I, would, that's what I wanted to do for life. So I told that to my granddaddy, man. I, I spent some time with him before he passed away, like in 84, 85. And it kind of left me on that note, so I kind of carried the family roots and legacy, put that on my back. His name was really um, Good Bleed, man. He was a World War II veteran. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody knew him family-wise and street-wise and otherwise, so they used to call him. His real name was James Donald Johnson Sr., but, you know, James Donald Good Bleed Johnson. Everybody in the street said he was good to bleed with his bare knuckles, so... I took that, you know, had a whole lot of names I juggled with throughout the years. <clears throat> and somewhere around, I'd say 93, 94, something like that, right when I started to get, you know, sort of say toward the big time, man, I thought back to what it all meant to me. And just on um, granddad, I just took his name and, you know, and chip off the old block, man, and added a young to it and branch myself off of everything it meant to me on the family way, the music way, and the real way. So yeah, just, you know, off the old man. And there it is right there, man. This is One West Radio, man. We want to know it all right here, man. We got a legend in the house. I got my man, Young Bleed, on the phone all day long. And you mentioned reaching the big time. Now, you had an opportunity to actually be number one on the top R&B hip-hop 
charts. Now tell us about that experience right there and going gold just two months later. Okay, yeah, we had man with Ashton Man uh, later on, like I say, somewhere around 95, 96. My big homie CeeLo started to connect with Master P, you know, with P yeah. working between, you know, I guess Richmond and somewhere in Cali. Uh -huh. And coming back to the South, man, the South was bubbling and, and, and re-bubbling for that matter. A lot of people don't remember, like, Rap a Lot Records and Luke Skywalker Records was the only record labels that we had from an independent standpoint and was black on back then when I was a kid coming up. So later on, you know, of course, Cash Money, No Limit, uh, Evolve, out the New Orleans area. So we been from Baton Rouge, we were 45 minutes away from New Orleans. <clears throat> so we'll go back and forth doing different things, you know, as far as editing videos, just our whole evolution from the audio to the video. So in a lot of those places, Master P and those guys would be at too. So when my homie connected with him, he was interested in what we had going on. Of course, we was interested in what they was doing. And I had a perfect opportunity working on a compilation with a click that um, we put together called the Concentration Camp. Okay. I did a song, yeah, the, the original title for um, How You Do That Was A Fool. So I put that song on the compilation and it started to take off in the city and surrounding areas became number one in Baton Rouge. So Pete liked it and it was the same time he was doing that body body movie, man. So he gave us a shot to be able to put that record on that soundtrack. And pretty much the rest is history. He was um, dealing with priority records at the time. For, for those not familiar with priority records, if you looked at the new movie straight out of Compton and Brian turning that whole evolution, we kind of the last, the last branch of that priority tree from easy eating them on down. So that introduced me to California as a whole. And I started coming out there around that time. And, um, on the street to pee, I got to deal with priority records, man. And like, summer of 97 and that soundtrack come out that year at the same time so the record was booming off of that naturally it set my debut up for 1998 and um, I want to say January 7th that album released in 1998 and by February I take it back January 27th and February 7th in about three weeks time it was a gold certified record so okay, it was a quick wow. you know what I mean a long time coming but a quick evolution for me so I had to you know get my feet on the ground and get used to that whole blast like you say with having the number one hip hop and R&B record number 10 on the pop chart I want to say I might be Michael Jackson at the time man so that was a big <laughs> now, a big thing yeah for a 22 year old man big time yeah now my man on the beat Happy Perez man tell us about that relationship right there in um, KLC Okay, how, um, and my guys, um, Max Manelli and Jay Vaughn had a group called, a local group called Lalo. Well, it was two, you know, two black guys that was rappers, you know what I mean? My young homies at the time, uh, I knew Max Manelli since about 11 years old. Man, I met Jay Vaughn about 15 and half was anywhere between 16 and 17. He was really originally from, uh, the same neighborhood of South Park, Mexican and all that, but his yeah. family had moved to Louisiana. Um, you know, years prior to me meeting him, and around that time, we started to connect and make records. I just stayed at the house with Max Manella, stayed at Happy Parents' house, and my mama's house, and everywhere we we could plug up at, we, you know, hang mics from the ceiling, do, do different kind of freestyle takes and stuff like that. So we had a good chemistry, and like I say, Ronald with Logan. My brother lucky enough with rest in peace to go out here when you're talking about the concentration camp, and eventually, John, um, Lit Boots, that's my lit cousin. <laughs> We all the South Baton Rouge together, you know what I mean? Same shit, family. that's your so little that cousin. Whole, yeah, that whole John dog um, <laughs> working with Hap. I describe Hap like this. Hap was like a Mexican Jimmy Hendrix to me. But he could play several instruments, you know, from a keyboard to a Spanish, Spanish stuff on the guitar and different things. So I fell in love with his evolution of music. And that black and brown, him being like one of the only Mexicans that was probably in Baton Rouge at yeah, the that. time. But he was like our personally, you know, our own producer, of course, but you know, family to us. I know he's family, mom, five brothers, and so on and so forth. So he was already rocking and linking like that to the music in our spare time. We just had fun overnight making a lot of good music, and we started to put them out on C Loke records and different things like that. So from there, I want to say, um, me and how true story. We probably had, we was all in a death to fine situation and we might have had, you know, whatever, you know, it came down to the rap, the rap thing really taking care of. So I think we might have had our last $20 and I sent them to the store to pick up this parliament record on Motor Booty Affair. 
and uh, I turned them on to the song, one of those funky things, man, which got that familiar, you know, the how you do that bass line, really from a part of the record, sound for some uh, Earth, Wind & Fire, Aretha Franklin, and different things like that. Now, you know, I, I laid uh, the format for us to drum, some old kind of, uh, I want to say public enemy, you know what I mean, type drum, UTFO kind of drum, so I mixed like the 80s hip hop into what was happening with the 90s so on and so forth and he put the signature whistle you know what I mean that twist yeah. on top of it so we, we sat there and we asked I actually produced or co-produced the vice versa me and Hal and I had the literature so we took a chance with that song and I, I felt so good about it I felt that the people had taped for it and once we recorded like I say it was just you know it was a little wild but once it took off it was like wildfire man so that's pretty much that I want to say Hal went on years later to become a Grammy Award running with Baby Bash and work with South Park Mexican and everybody else up until the current day. So yeah, pretty much like that. So shots out to Happy Perez all day long now. Yes, sir. Now, um, people are still banging that track in the club today, but how did you react, man, when, when you heard that remake that remake pop up with Problem out there with Like What? Oh, well, the thing is this. <laughs> it's good, <laughs> No problem. I'm saying that, you know, of course, uh, I was on Strange in like 2010, 2011, so I had a chance, you know, shout out to Jack Nine, Travis, over the whole staff, but amongst that staff was a cat like J-Rock, you know what I mean, from all the whites, you know what I mean, for everybody that's not familiar with J-Rock. That's the homie all day, like, shout out to J-Rock. Yeah, yeah, Kendrick Lamar and um, the homie King, you know what I mean, I had, I got yet to meet Kendrick, me and J-Rock and King was real, is real cool. So, maybe a few months or something after we met, maybe a year or so after that, King called me, had a young cat on the phone, and said he had, you know, wanted to do something with a, with a song I had or remade a song I had, and that cat was a problem. So we talked, and before it was introduced to the world on a, on a major blast, yeah, he shot me the song. I appreciated him giving me a shot in and how he did it. You know, I was cool with it. And uh, the rest was, like I say, history. So, you know, shout out to here again on uh, TDE, my company. We used to we used to compare this. Uh, my company started Trap Doe Entertainment, and, you know, they top dog entertainment. <laughs> so, I ain't click this too. Yeah, you know what I mean? The two, two TDE. So, on the strength of those guys, they connected me with Pop and the rest of the industry history, you know? Now, also, man, this is One West Magazine, One West Radio, man. It's going down, man. I got the legendary Young Bleed in the house, man. Straight out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And you do know that now. You also, you had a chance to um, work with Pimp C, right? Yeah, man, I'm um, actually in a funny way. Pimp was my man, like we talking right now. Pimp was um, actually always doing different things like that. I knew Mama West, rest in peace to both of them. I loved them like they was my own. Um, a lot of people don't know, I think, Pimp them was really from Crawley, Louisiana, originally into Texas, Port Arthur, and so on and so forth. So I used to hear stories and different things about old old guys in my neighborhood. He used to tell me I needed to meet Chad you know, as I was coming up. And eventually we met in life in Atlanta years later. I used to always be on the phone trying to connect and get a record done with Pimp through Mommy and Pimp. But we hadn't saw each other for a while, so one of the times I shot that Atlanta had a show with um, MJG, South Circle, um, I forgot who else was on that ticket, but I remember Twister being in the house and one of those nights Pimp C was in the audience or something and he come met me backstage and we had been cool ever since then before the jail term and once he come home we got back together. But the truth of it all, uh, I had just give Pimp a record before he passed away yeah. and before he could record that record, you know, he was on town at the mass, but as far as the history, my first record, the bars of my word record, he produced a track that was original, I believe, for either a mystical album or the 504 Boys record, which was called Bring the Noise. So um, I had a few songs to wrap up at the end of my record. He done called me in and recorded like three songs before he turned into record. And Bring the Noise was one. He let me hear a few records that had vocals and people had already recorded on in particular in the mystical. And that was one of the records that I liked open third first, I smashed it, everybody loved it, and he get that to me for my record, but now I find out later on that Pimp C had produced that track, so I shared that with Pimp before See, I didn't know Pimp C even made, I didn't even know he made beats. Yeah, yeah, Pimp is like, 
other than Mike Dean, a whole lot of them Southern sounds you hear in particular coming out of Texas and that UGK sound. Yeah. That was pimp, pimp all day. You know, singing, I want to say pimp had scholars for being a, a tenor on the vocals. I didn't know he was as talented beyond just <laughs> rapping. But pimp, pimp, pimp made the beats, you know what I mean? He sung on the record, so yeah, he was kind of like uh, UGK's own Dr. Trey, you know what I mean? Well, anybody man, that got damn. a pimp track. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Rest in peace, Pimp C, all day long, man. Yes, West sir. Coast love, man, and UGK for life. Now, um, yes, sir. now, if I didn't already know that you was from Baton Rouge when I saw that video, man, give and take, I'd have swore to God, man, you was out here on the West Coast hopping in them low lows like that, man. Now, tell us about that joint right there and how you came up with it. Okay, well, you know, actually, I was on my second album with Priority. I was scheduled to do, like, about three to five records in different things took place for I could uh, do my third record with them but back in the tape off a little bit more um, that's the single we picked off it's produced by my guy Steve Below. for those who are not familiar with Steve Below, he, oh, he always was doing his own thing out of, out of Dallas, Texas but you know he kind of originated with the concentration camp and then later on into the UGK records and in particular those last couple of albums them, them put out before he passed away but Steve you know he produced half of my own and half he did the other half of me Maybe one or two producers here and there did like 12 tracks. But that's the track we picked off of it. Um, actually, they sent me a few different video treatments, and it's the first time that I really directed or co-directed a video. That was dope. So it was like that, yeah. I took them through my seat to give them more glimpse. Everybody was used to seeing me on the boat with P now. I think we <laughs> might have shot in Malibu or somewhere in Cali. But I wanted to take it back to the block, and, you know, everybody was familiar with New Orleans and what was taking place. So I wanted to bring them inside back and really just show them where I was coming from. So that was just a regular day, nothing at stage. Everybody just kind of came out for me whenever I did anything. So from 6 that morning to about 7 that afternoon, we shot that video in different parts of my city and different hoods. And I was able to capture that, man. Uh, once we shot it out to the world, everybody dug it, in particular the West Coast. Um, guys like Sally Sarah reached out to me at that time. We did a record together, you know, Big Mike from the Ghetto Boys. But everybody respected the fact that it was such on the ground level and how I just more broadcasted my people and where I was coming from and me just, you know, being all, like I said, all in the video and different things like that, just it being about me, but just bringing them to my world. So it was a record that I was skeptical about because it wasn't that clear of how, that how you do that war. So following that, I was in particular how the people I take to it was still to this day. That's a lot of people's favorite record, man. Oh, man, all day long. And, you know, I got it in rotation. Yeah. Heavy rotation on One West Radio right now, man. That beat was bananas. It was off the chain, man. That song right yes, there was sir. a cold classic, man. And, I, and I, I'm just as much as in love with that beat with Give and Take. That was off the chain. That beat was just like this crazy. Yes, all like, so shots out to Steve on that. Now, um, Steve Below, yes sir. Man, did it real big on that project. Now, now tell me, does does Young Beat, does, does Young Bleed have a, a dream collaboration out there? Somebody that you haven't worked with yet? Um, a lot of cats, man. Um, like I said, coming into Priority at the time, when we knew Priority, it was pretty much after NWA and just how you see the movie is, you know what I mean? Q kind of went after NWA and became the solo star child for his Priority records as a whole, of course, with Lynch Mob and Street Product and everything else that he worked with. So Q always been one of my favorites. I mean, my list go back. And like I say, I'm about old as hip hop now. I'm in my early 40s, man. So, you know, when you look back from New York before we got a glimpse of the West and before we come down home and across the country, uh, my favorite rapper of all time has always been Rock Kim. I love LL and Daddy Kane. You know, I got an infinite list, cool G rap, so I have to break it down in sections. So, still to this day, I get the chance to rub shoulders with a lot of these guys, in particular, Cool Mo D, Doug, and Fresh. So, anybody that still remain in my love for hip hop, Man, I'm still trying to do records with Ice Cube, Slick Rick, uh, Houdini, you know what I mean? Scarface, and a lot of these guys, you know, we good friends and family when we see each other, but everybody gets so busy. Yeah. And so it's complex, so I get a chance, actually. Um, I'm working on an album not called Living. I just released a single called Make Them Dance that y'all up on right now. But this particular record, I'm trying, every time I do a record, I try to pick up where I left off and reach out and do some records with guys that I hadn't, or now have the privilege to work with so so far I've got like uh, me and Dad so it'll be the second time we get a record from the dog pound shout out to Dad Snoop and the whole dog pound corrupt my dad so on so far but uh, Dad as I 
Like I don't know what I'm so far. Cocaine did a hot joint for me. Um, Spice one and yuck my off in particular. You know what I'm saying? So I'm still building my skeleton. I got a lot of good weapons, but I'm setting it off to see when I'm gonna release with that open door for a whole lot of guys, man. Um, East Coast, West Coast, down south, the Midwest. I got enough collabo pockets to do a collabo oh, run. So it'd be a yeah, it'd be a thing for me. You know how the game and change. You know when when we kind of come out of it for what's taking place now, you know, guys are doing double this and triple this, you see what I'm saying? So now, you know, the manufacturing costs and so on and so forth, you know what I mean, the way it is now, it's almost back to the old school, the way they was put down 9, 11 songs and rubber parts, you really get paid for but A lot of people don't know that when you're putting out 10 records in the bank pass, that is a bonus track. Yeah. So you know what I mean? So um, a lot of these guys, you know, for the audience listening, man, giving you extra records, especially in particular from the South, we slab riders, and I'm sure throughout the country, but you know what it is between that and the West in particular, we had all the Trump game, and still without the industry on the independent level, so we, we make that slab music and put in something that you can listen to and let it play over and over if you got two, four-hour drive, whatever you're doing. So then it kind of narrowed down from there, so my hardest part now is putting the album together and having all those features, you know what I mean, with anticipation of waiting for next year or the next six, eight months to put out another record just to do just what my life dream been. If I get a chance to do a record with Curtis Blow, I'm on it, you know what oh, I mean? Dang. But it's the same thing. What I try to do in particular, I say my name mean this as a whole. Uh, I'm the young that bleed for this new generation in a party on way, in a family way, you know what I mean? So in, in that sense, I try to bridge that gap between young and old, man. It's a lot of um, up and coming guys, a lot of new guys that I did, you know, future to daddy, to whoever, you know what I mean? So anytime I get a chance and I'm out and about, I'm trying to click, click, click the situation, man, see what we can do to put all here together to make more beautiful music and make more money to support and take care of each other all here, you know? All day long, man. Now, you mentioned earlier, man, you worked with my man, Cocaine. I had him on the show yeah. last night, man. Big shots out to the king of G-Funk all day long. Now, tell me all yeah, about your experience with working with Cocaine. Oh, uh, man, it's beautiful. You know, uh, Coke like a ways George Clinton, you know what I mean? So, for as that funk era, and like you say, being the king of that G-Funk era, coming off that same NWA tree, I always dug cocaine years ago, so it's an honor and a privilege and a, and a pleasure to be able to connect with him on the real life man-to-man brotherhood theory first, you know what I mean? Then something on that music, man. Like I said, once I release this record, everybody gonna dig it. It was something that I knew fit him hand and glove, and that's just how he took to it, so I appreciate that, and like I say, man, shots off the coat, and whatever we do in the future, you know what I mean? Now, we definitely look forward to spinning that on One West Radio, man. Young bleeding cocaine, man, you know I can't miss that, you know what I'm saying? We gonna be on yeah, that like a yeah. hubcap all day long. Now, what motivates Young Bleed to keep it cracking every day? Oh, man, just life itself. Like I said, I'm calling my album living, man. If you ain't living, you ain't doing nothing else. You can't make no money, can't go down the street. So it's just, you know, God, life, and then that type of inspiration and just the basic thought of a day, man. Uh, I kind of live timeless. You know, I listen to the radio at a slight glimpse, but I, I, I be listening to some 70s music, some 30s music, some blues, so I love music. So rather independently or major for the game existing, like I say, I love music from a baby up, you know what I mean? I used to sing in the choir, I used to play drums about five years old and throughout life and just, it's, it's throughout my family. So that always been that. So in, in a thoughtless fashion, you know, it's infinite, man. So anytime I get a good vibe, you know, I keep the studio at the crib and link with everyone around me when I travel across the country and throughout the world. So yeah, it's just that, that vibe and that love and like I say, that evolution where hip hop to became its own culture. So, you know, you get with the right people and, you know, me being one entity, you know what I mean? Each one teach one that. The more I go out and meet other people that's inspiring people and that's doing something, it's that, it's that you know, it's rough and you want to go in the town and give it all up just like anything else. It looks like ain't nothing happening. You know, everything go up and down. But you'll meet somebody that'll re-spark you all over again. So I learned a long time ago from nine years old, God said the same, going into 2016, I'll be 42 years old. So it's a lot of days I thought, yeah, this wouldn't last long, and especially where I'm coming from. It's not New York, it's not California. Before the birth of Boosie, Kevin Gates, 
Lee Webby, everything that Baton Rouge is now, it was a shot in the dark, you know, you know what I mean? So, <clears throat> but I could see it from afar. I had a cousin that used to go up to New York every year and recall what I call the real mixtapes with um, Red Alert on, um, Marlon Marlon and the real Mr. Magic on, um, rest in peace, you know, OG Mr. Magic out there for the East Coast and Kiss FM, you know, he'll just take a TDK tape, you know what I mean? Yeah, Back TDK. in the day, they didn't have tapes no more, <laughs> you know what I mean? And record everything, so I had Rock Kim Records, MC Shan, all that before it ever even hit the South, you know, in the South, a lot of people don't know, and in particular, Louisiana, we the last to get everything, so yeah. by the time it's old to you, it's new to me, you see what I'm saying? So... Yeah, so I had that kind of advantage, freestyle battles and all that. My skills were shaped and built a different way because I had that kind of underground, you know what I mean, evolution. I could see what was coming for it, got here, and I knew where to take the game. So it's a look back for me and a shout out to everybody, man. I used to pray over my hood and my city that something else would happen different. So now I could look back and see the success of a booster or web it, Fox and whoever, Kevin Gates that's coming out there, man. That's a long time coming for us. You know what I mean? So, you know, that's my whole thing to keep it going, man. Pass it on as it go down. All day long now. I ask everybody that come on this show, man, on One West Radio, man, the same question right here. Now, you got quite the catalog. Now, now if you were stuck on an island and released or unreleased, you can only choose one of your tracks out of your catalog to take with you. Which one would it be and why? Wow. Yeah, that's kind of hard one, man. Uh in particular, right now, I got a track, man. Like I said, I put out the Make Them Dance, the videos on Vivo, all that's available on Google, Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, etc. But right now, I got this track, man. I think I'm finna uh, release it in about a month or so. The second single before the album is called Living Good. And it's so kind of smooth, laid back, clear, and inspiring, you know, at the dump. Inspiring the way it's kind of R&B rap track, but I really dig that. That kind of be the first spark I hear when I wake up in the morning due to the elegance of the track. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like that. But um, looking back, yeah, it'll be kind of hard to say, man. Uh, I got so many records and so many featured records in you know, my catalog of solo records. Yeah, it's hard to pull one of you know. It's like the meat in the haystack right there, you know. It's like um, I always ask that question because it's like it tells some something about the person's character. Like out of, out of all of my body of work, it was this track yeah. that meant the most to me right here, and this is why. So if I had to be stuck somewhere, I'm taking this joint with me right here. Well, I say this, man, for my classic record and everybody that know, why everybody loves how you do that. Yeah, I love you. That's my baby to the world. But my favorite track on that whole record was on um, The Last Outlaw. You know what I mean? It's always a kind of revelation. It's kind of like that to me. You know what I mean? Kind of uh, cut and shoot. You know what I mean? Hit or miss. Last shot in the dark, get on the horse and ride. And at that time, um, it was fresh off the Duffer Big, the Duffer Pot, and me growing into the, the hip hop world. It's like being a modern day outlaw. You know what I'm saying? You got to fight and survive out here in the most streetwise you is. And guys, you know, you know the evolution of hip hop really come out. To make them to them project bricks, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's street music that we have beautified over the years. So it got that street back and it is a dark side. So in that sense, it's win, lose, or draw, man. So I took to the game and at that time, like I said, it wasn't no turning back due to what was taking place in my city and a whole lot of cities around the country. Yeah, it was now never so you know, it was like, yeah, you know, I kinda um Succeeded by making it to the other side. It's kind of like crossing the bridge, man. So in that sense, yeah, that was my favorite joint on the rock of the last outlaw, you know. All day long. Now, this is One West Magazine, One West Radio, man. Shots out to all my loved ones and listeners, man, out there in the dirty, man. Shots out to all my fam bam out there in the 334, man, Enterprise, Alabama in the house. I'm on the phone right now with my man, Young Bleed, man, out of Baton, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, man. He's been doing it big for a long time. Been one of my favorite yeah. artists, man. I, it's, I, it's an honor to have him on the phone right now and chop it up with him now. Before we go, man, any quick, quick shout outs for the streets? 
Uh, yeah, man, shout out to the whole Cardignan family, man. You know, I'm trapped over entertaining my guys, Team Mash and all. That's some guys out there, my man. Keep Chris off, man. We had a chance to work on my last record that I put out on with Strange Star Preserve. He did a couple of joints, but we just got distribution on them through in groove and they helped me push the line, man. So shout out to Team Mash and all. Um, and Dang, he's a diamond producer on um, Keep Chris off out there in L.A., man. So shout out from the south to the west, to the east, to the midwest, you know what I mean? All the way around the border, man. Much love, respect, and God bless you, hear Now, we definitely going to be banging all that new young bleed on One West Radio, man. We got our ears glued to the streets, man. We support you 10,000% over here. Yes, sir, and I appreciate the love. I'm going to keep me in the firm, and I got you on my side. There it is there, man. That's my OG right there, man. Young Bleed, man. They, like I said, they still asking how he doing that right there, man. This is your boy P. Flicks, Damian Sanders, yes, One sir. West Magazine, One West Radio. And you do know.